Welcome to your lesson with Dr. Bao. Let's take a look at a gluing diagram which actually describes a sphere and some boundary maps. We're going to be looking at their matrices that described um, um, how to take a boundary of an edge, how to take a boundary of a face. Um, now let's first look at this diagram. How in the world does it describe a sphere? We see this arrow A and this arrow A. Imagine like gluing those to together, like maybe on the backside coming around here and just gluing them, closing them up. And this B and B, so the arrows, the B arrows are also glued together. The W's um, would, would come together on the other side. And notice how this is a, this is actually a V and this is a U. So that's a V and that's a U. So these are distinct in the gluing diagram, meaning that they don't come together. But um, the W's do come together right there. So what we end up getting is it doesn't really look like a sphere, but it's a closed shape. It's kind of like this. And then these guys have been kind of wrapped around here and then glued together to kind of make kind of like a kind of a purse type thing kind of coming down um, and with, you know, angled, but you can kind of morph it now. If, so you get a kind of a closed um, enclosed shape and you can morph this, stretch it, bend it into a sphere. So it's a gluing diagram for a sphere because you can morph what you get into a sphere afterwards very nicely, just, just kind of like stretching it out. But it's if you make an enclosed shape, any like even a football, you could think of a football, a cube or whatever like, as being a sphere, if you like, in this kind of terminology, as long as it's like a closed, simple object like that. Okay, but tech, but usually we think of this as being a sphere. <clears throat> All right, so taking a look at this, how do we create these uh, boundary maps or boundary functions and what do they mean? So we have some edges and we have um, some faces. So this is like a face of the object, another face. And this is just the way we split it up in this particular diagram. This is what you'd call a cell complex. Um, for for a sphere, and there's multiple ones. There's even simpler ones that you could create. However, this is just an example. All right. Um, so it's made up of faces. The faces have edges, and then these edges are kind of glued, and vertices are glued together to make an enclosed um, enclosed object. Now we have different boundary maps that we can create between edge um, that go from, what is this going from? I say edges to vertices. These are really, I'm gonna think of them right now at least as vector spaces. So V, we're gonna think of V as being a vector space that's generated by um, three objects. We're gonna make those objects be these three vertices, U, V, and W. So V is going to be um, U, V, and W. So it has dimension three. The number of edges, let's see. Well, I only see, let's see, I have three edges here, right? A and B and C. So that's gonna be generated by three vectors, A, B, and C. So you kind of think about this vector space as simply being objects or the symbols even, U, V, and W, and you take spans of them. Um, and let's take our vector space over the real numbers. So um, with scalars and R. So all linear combinations of these symbols with scalars and R, um, ass assuming that um, uh, we have commutativity and uh, closure and other things, and we can combine, you know, like V plus 3V is equal to um, uh, is equal to 4V and things like that. So we get we get a vector space here of dimension 3, assuming these guys are linearly independent in that form of basis. This has dimension 3. It's the number of edges. Number of faces, well, there's two distinct faces, and we're going to call them linearly independent as well, and a basis for the vector space faces. So now, what is this? What is this and what is this? These are functions that go from one to the other. They are linear transformations describable completely by matrices. And we're gonna talk about how to build those matrices. First, we need to realize what they mean and what they, what they do. So this is a boundary mechanism. It's like for taking a boundary. So if you see an edge, what's the boundary of the edge? Well, it's the two vertices on either end of that edge. So for instance, what is the boundary of 
the edge A? Well, we think about it, let's think. Um, we have W and V. And what we're gonna say is if it's at the tip, we're gonna say it's positive. And if it's at the tail, we're gonna say it's negative minus V. Now, if you notice, if you're familiar with what an incidence matrix is, that's exactly what the incidence matrix does. It takes um, tip minus tail, just like that, um, as you build a column. In fact, partial one is simply the, the map or the function for the incidence matrix. You can call it the incidence map, if you want, of the digraph, if you forget the, the faces. So this is the incidence map. Um, so uh, if we can build a incidence matrix, we've got partial one. That's all part. So I'm calling this partial one uh, simply because um, I guess this this particular um, letter is used um, for uh, used for partial derivatives in calculus. However, it, you maybe we should just call it boundary one. Okay, so boundary one right here is the incidence map. All right. I like to call them partial one. So if I if I call it that, don't get confused. So partial one, partial two. All right. <clears throat> so this is the incident incidence map. Now maybe we should just build this right now while we're at it. Just think about it. So we have three distinct um, edges. So I think of column interpretation. Where's the destination of each of these edges? A, B, C. Where do they end up going? Well, they're gonna. The codomain is. V, that's where we land in the vertices. So let's see, the A we just said was W minus V. Maybe we should notate this. Maybe we'll go U, V, W. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that uh, the boundary of A, so where's A gonna end up going? It's gonna go have a one and a minus one right there. All right, so one U minus one V, plus zero U. Okay, that's the image destination of A. Okay, now what's the destination of B? What's the boundary of the of the edge B? Now, wait a minute, before we move on, maybe we should double check. Wasn't there two instances of A? There's A here and A here. Well, notice that they look the same. In order for a gluing diagram really to work this way, they better be this, have the same um, boundary wherever they occur as we do the gluing. So V, W, so it really should be consistent. Now for B, let's see what happens. We have W and U, okay? Make sure W, yeah, that looks good. So U is at this end and W is at the tail. So W will be at the tail and U will be at the tip right there, okay? Now for C, let's see how to do that. So U will be at the tip and V will be at the tail just like that, okay? So we have A, B, C, very nice, we get that. So this is the matrix for partial one. All right, let's consider what the matrix would be for partial two now. All right, let's see if we can do that. Um, so how are we gonna build that matrix? So this is now boundaries of faces. Okay, so we've got boundaries of faces. So what's the boundary of a face? I mean, an edge was like, you know, tip minus tail, but how do you deal with the face now? Well, if you kind of go a counterclockwise pattern around like this, go a counterclockwise pattern, you kind of fix this thinking of counterclockwise looking around is like on the outside of a face or of the, maybe the object that you're looking at, three-dimensional surface. And, and that's kind of the, we've picked an orientation. So our orientation that we've chosen um, will deal with, uh, will deal with boundaries counterclockwise and a counterclockwise orientation. So we've just kind of fixed that, have a fixed orientation, and then we're just gonna go for it from there. Okay, so as we go around right here, what do we notice? So we have A, then B, and then O going against C. So it'll be negative C. So in other words, the um, boundary of face two is going to be C, A plus B, and then minus C, counterclockwise fashion. Now, what's the boundary of F1? 
and that would be so going kind of clockwise we got pay from here we got c going that way so going around here but then notice we're going against b and against a so we have c and then we have um, minus b minus a and if you notice these are actually the negatives of each other um so uh, we have that the matrix for partial two given these um, faces and and uh, and edges in this way and we'll write this as a b c going down maybe we'll say f1 and f2 because we're looking in a column interpretation of this matrix function here this linear transformation partial two or boundary of faces map and um and uh, the image of face one is going to be right here image of face two is going to be right here as a column so face one let's see so we're going to have a positive one on the c and a minus one these are the scalar coefficients of b and a like that now for f2 we're going to have a minus one and a one one so we have we have correctly um, described our and successfully described our um, boundary map, our boundary function for um, from faces to edges.